have to wait any longer for our first matchup. Time to start talking about Knights taking on the Chiefs, a rivalry in O's that truly does live up to its standard. However, with Knights coming into 2022 with, uh, I would say, a bit of a, a mark next to their name, you know, they really didn't perform well in Stage 3. After being Stage 2 champions, we really were left with just, I think, a little bit of misery uh, on that facet. But it was Chiefs that ended up picking up the O slack, if you will. They obviously ended up booking their ticket all the way to the Sweden Major. And this roster here, uh, I mean, they look so dangerous, but there's also still an element of doubt. Is this team better than the former Raven? Look, it's, I think there's still time that needs to, to happen before we can make that call. But look, it's been a really good start to stage one. We've been pretty open about, I guess, some of the skepticism that we had at the start of the stage about how they would go out of the gate. Um, but it's been really strong, as you can tell from the standings. They're second. Um, they've been able to challenge basically every team they've been against. Um, they've had the, the new pickups actually perform really well. Bouncin in particular, I think, special shout out for him. He's just been having an insane stage. He's still third best rated in the entire APAC South League. So for his debut season at this level, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, which is funny, Dev, because Bouncin, for those that aren't, you know, relatively well known to the O scene. Bouncing is a player that we spoke about all throughout 2021. Really stormed the scene. Bouncing Balls is what his full name was. And there was, you know, jokes in the chat about him. He was an absolute rare unit. He actually took stage three off entirely. And there were rumors that he was looking to join the Chiefs. And in fact, Ethan actually ended up taking his place. But he does join this roster. And truthfully, I think we can all agree with Raven here. He stood up to the mark. Yeah, absolutely. I think Bouncing's always known that there would eventually be a home for him on this roster, and he's really taken advantage of that. That said, Bouncing isn't, believe it or not, the most standout player on this roster. That is still <laughs> Worthy. Worthy, the best player that New Zealand has ever seen, and one of the best in O's as a whole. Uh, he has been absolutely nuts. He is the second top-rated player in APAC South right now. The number one player for KD, even above Speakeasy, and also the number one player for entry. So on this team right here, you've got the two best entry players in in the league in bounce and, and worthy and aside from that like you just have a really strong fundamental core roster ethan's taken a bit of a, a back seat these days more of a support role now that fisho is no longer on the team yep. and i think that one thing that everyone can agree on is like this is a roster where you have a lot of really high impact fraggers and at the helm you've got bouncing or worthy who are going to do the heavy lifting yeah i can almost hear xenox already forever always will be it's worthy there's something in the background <laughs> there who's always holding that title a team that's trying to snatch back their title of course the knights really uh, trying to get back to former glory of stage two and there is a huge opportunity for them to do so here their run home obviously isn't the easiest trek they've got ig next week and then direwolves on their final play day so this is really a must win game for them raven it is and look i think this is achievable even though we've talked about chiefs having some strength and looking pretty good this stage I think there's always that edge, you know, Knights and Chiefs know each other pretty well, being two Oceanic teams, played each other a lot at, at higher levels. So, look, I think this could be one that maybe goes towards an upset. We can talk about predictions a bit later. Uh, yep. But I think what's really concerning for Knights is it just feels like their roster hasn't quite clicked yet, which is funny because I actually felt like their roles look good, but Stiggs and Quiz both not tracking super well on stats. I mean, Stiggs is leaning more into a, a support face role, so that's okay, but regardless, it just... I don't know, the, the missing piece doesn't feel like it's slotted in just yet. Do you think that it's going to come, Dev, or do you think that this is just going to take time? I don't know, it's really, really hard to say. I, I know that there were so many free agents during the transfer period, and Knights knew that they were rebuilding their roster for months and months, like a lot longer than any other team did. While that Six Invitational was going, while the um, Six Invitational qualifiers were going on, this team was still rebuilding their roster. They knew that Haywood and Dino were out the door and they had a lot of choice uh, for what players they decided to pick up. And I'm a little bit surprised they went with Stiggs and Quiz. And like you said, they haven't been performing very well. They're the bottom two rated players on the team. Stiggs in that support role, but Quiz picked up as a fragger. Like he's a young gunner, yeah. kind of like Bouncing, but not as experienced. He came from OCL, so he didn't even play at a national level. And I, I'm no, I, I'm just a bit concerned for Knights. Um, I really want to see them do better, but you know they beat Fury and Renatus. If they can't win here, that's probably the only points they're going to get for the entire stage. That is super grim. Really, yeah, really it grim. is. 
it's it's a concern for us, especially as Ace fans. But obviously, as Knights fans, they were so devastating in 2021. But let's turn our attention to the map, Vito, because we need to get underway with this game. Try not to hold up for too much longer, of course. We're getting told to press the start button. So let's have a look at where we're going to head for this matchup in particular. Feel like, there we go. We're actually going to go to Clubhouse. I think this might be the first Clubhouse we've seen so far this stage. Raven, what do you make of it? I think it's not the first clubhouse I've seen this stage. Yeah. Uh, sorry, mate. But Wrecked. <laughs> no, look, I'm uh, Wrecked. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Second. For for Chiefs, you know, Clubhouse was actually a super strong map at some point last year, and then at some point it just wasn't. They started to hit this like voodoo period where it felt like they were actually really struggling to pull some really big wins on Clubhouse. And in fact, last time these guys played each other, which was in the OCN season finals, uh, it was a 7-1 win to Knights on Clubhouse. So I know different rosters, but the, the track, re track record isn't super great for Chiefs. <laughs> I mean, do we lean into that, Dev? Do we start to tell that story? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like back in the day, this was one of Chiefs' best maps, but as of recently, like they lost it to Bliss in season finals. They actually got 7 one by both FaZe and Rogue at the Sweden Major. They did beat OXG at the Sweden Major, but OXG were playing with a sub at the time. For a long time, this was considered as Chiefs' best map until it wasn't, until they started playing it a little bit too much, they started losing it. Like you said, uh, very different roster now. Um, as you can see, neither teams have played it so far, but we are seeing a meta shift overall with how attacker or defender side of different maps and sites are being. The one that's interesting to me is to see that, well, two things. Firstly, that Master and Jim, uh, albeit we don't have very many stats, only 12 rounds to go off in total, Master and Jim is looking to be uh, defender sided right now, which is interesting. For many, it's considered a tertiary site. And bar stage, the one round it has been played was actually won by the <laughs> defense. So I'm really keen to see whether we see more pocket picks, more teams leaning into those less picked sites. Yeah, bar and stage, what an interesting site that has become ever since the rework. Important to note that, of course, those stats, by the way, how good is the new graphic? I just, <laughs> we got to make it, we got to call it what out there. What hate version? Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. We, look, we might, we might end up showing that paint version at one point throughout the broadcast just to give everyone an idea as to who the visionary is on this broadcast but to give you an idea for the league stats Renatus and Elevate played on that the very first play day it was a 7-5 victory to Renatus a bit of a shock I think to a lot of uh, a lot of viewers and also probably to the players as well of both teams but it's time to get a bit more of a, a holistic approach here Raven who are you going for where are we leaning at the moment Look, I'm still leaning towards Chiefs. I feel like it would be silly of me not to, just based yeah. on form and results and that kind of thing. Um, I could foresee this end up as a, uh, an upset, but I'm just thinking Chiefs, based on what we've seen from them so far this stage, uh, yeah, I think they're going to win it fairly comfortably. Dev, do you think the unknown entity that is, you know, Quiz, that is Stigs, the fact that this roster is still coming together, could cause a bit of chaos here on Clubhouse? Is it possible? I don't think that there's much that Knights can do to really surprise Chiefs. I just think it's a, a game of fundamentals. That's where Knights have been lacking uh, sometimes on the entries and in the gunfights. You know, it's it's not going the way of quiz. Sometimes the pushes and the late round coordination isn't quite perfect. Um, and so, you know, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. I'm sorry that I just called out quiz, but I just see how the cookie crumbles. I think, you know, Chiefs will dictate the early round like they always do. They're the kings of opening kills. So Knights need to play slow. They need to make sure to counter that. And yeah, I mean, just fundamentals bring it back to basics now very quickly i don't know whether this is these are definitely the stats that uh you know we're being given uh, i can't remember who it is on twitter that's giving it to us but uh 88 chance if knights pull out a regulation win here as well as the chiefs just making sure that that is the up uh, okay it's last week's play day but i think that that would still almost hold somewhat to truth with where the Knights are sitting right now. If they pull out a regulation win here, they do go equal with the Chiefs. But then we've got a lot of teams toward the top end. You know, we're still, when we're looking at the, the top four, Raven, we are really fighting for what is, you know, really the 11 point threshold that we had uh, back in 2021. Each stage was 11 points minimum that you needed to make your way into the playoffs. Diable's obviously close there. But I think the big question that I want to pose to you is what do you think the chances are of Knights or Chiefs making it at this point? Because one, of, I think it's one of these teams has to miss out. When you look at the last two play days for both of these teams, Chiefs have Elevate, then have IG, whereas Knights have Dire Wolves 
and then have, uh, t sorry, Diables on their final play day, but they are playing up against uh, okay. Invictus next week. So what really are the chances that if one of these teams don't pull the victory here, we could see them slip out? Yeah, I feel like that's definitely the danger for Knights. I Chiefs. feel like less so for Chiefs. Again, I, just, I think in general, because I have a bit more faith in their current form. Um, because Knights didn't get that win on play day four, it definitely has reduced their chances. Uh, this is probably their last... I'd say big opportunity to be able to take three points. Otherwise, I think it's going to be really, it's going to be real rough. Um, I think for Knights, though, it's more about they just probably need to use this stage to focus on getting where they need to be with their team. You know, grinding in their roles, grinding in their synergy, and kind of get re getting ready for stage two because I, they've had some okay performances, but it is still very hit and miss. So I feel like even if they make playoffs, it's going to be rough. But of course, you're always aiming to get uh, the best placement possible. Um, so. Tonight is just a big opportunity for Knights to try and stay within touch. And I think, Dev, when we look at all of the teams and all the shuffles that we've had over the last, you know, two, three months, all of these teams pretty much have a 40% new roster, some more than others, <coughs> IG. Um, However, when I was speaking to Rousty, I do remember uh, recalling the fact that he's talking about the fact that stage one was really too early for them to be able to kind of pull something together here. But my question I want to pose to you is, do you think that it's a valid excuse that we are seeing uh, fresher teams come into the mix? I think, yeah, look, I think that teams with recent roster changes, if they have high fragging roster changes, for example, like the Chiefs who have picked up players like Bouncer and Bo Boydie, both fraggers, t teams like IG who have picked up both fraggers as well, they're the teams that I think will find it easier to have immediate results, but harder to have long-term results, right? Because if you want consistency over a long period of time, it comes down to the what a player provides as a whole package, like, you know, attitude, their work ethic, their um, ability to, like, contribute outside of just fragging and whereas in the short term like you know we saw what Nate did on the clutch and all that for IG so look I think that for Chiefs right now they're in hot form I think Knights are going to have a really big time and every match they play this stage is going to get more and more tough really does feel like a little bit of a David versus Goliath story, which is funny considering where 2021 left us with all of these teams. However, it is time for the game. We are pressing that big red button and to take you through all of the action it's Xenox and Guz. Well, the fellas on the desk basically went over just about everything, Guz. Not much we can really add to the topic <laughs> other than uh, I'll just say it does kind of feel like must-win territory for the Knights. It was something that was spoken about last week. Tough run home. Starts, of course, tonight with the Chiefs. Then they've got IG. Then they've got Direwolves. If they're to make the top four, it'll be a well-earned top four if they get there in the end. Yeah, this is the most top-heavy we have seen Apex out in quite some time. A definite split between the top four mm. and the bottom four at the moment. Unfortunately for the Knights, this is basically must-win territory for them. Have a tough run home. They're still in with a shot to squeeze into that top four, but they basically have to be fours from this point onwards. We head over to Clubhouse as, uh, well, what used to feel like the home of the Chiefs could end up being once again. 65% to 35% new roster, of course, coming over to Clubhouse. For the Knights, it's, yeah, do or die here, of course. They had a very disappointing result against Elevate in play day four, 7-2. They got demolished on border. They did not really look competitive at all. They will need to bounce back here today. I don't think we've casted any clubhouse yet this stage, so it should be a nice little switch up. Um, a map that, for the most part, plays out the same way, week in, week out, and teams that are a little bit more proficient and efficient in making sure that they get the basics and the foundations down pat normally do win out games. Maverick Thatcher off the board first. Again, clubhouse playing out the same as every other clubhouse game, essentially, so that's going to limit some of the hard bridge capabilities for these teams. That'll be followed up by a smoke, in fact, on the defense here for the Knights. So a little bit of a change up there. Those smoke canisters obviously quite potent in being able to stall out plants and planting is often the name of the game on a clubhouse attack and mirror to follow things up. Wow. Pretty standard how brave. across the board. How brave here from the Knights and the Chiefs to really just shake things up here in the fan phase. I'm joking, obviously. Pretty stock standard as we head into the first round. Chiefs on the defense first. We saw that wonderful new graphic, guys, actually, in the um, the pre-show with the the statistics. Of course, not much to go off. We haven't had too much clubhouse, and yes. it's only just begun. But still nice to see. Roughly 58%, I think, was defender win rate. Mm. I will just loop back quickly to that ban discussion. Kaid has made it through. Now, typically, if Maverick and Thatcher are banned, one of the teams is going to ban out the Kaid because it is... Super frustrating. It takes a lot of utility to be able to clear out those claws. Carly. Clearly, the Knights have sort of um, 
jumped outside of that meta and, and taken the smoke ban. Even Kali is useless on a lot of on a lot of spots. You can get claws where Kali is not going to do anything. Twitch. So Twitch probably going to be in play. We'll see Sage with the repick. Nades as well are going to be really important. Some of the hatches, for example, in Moto, for example, you can get nice. Uh, vert lines aside and, and send out nades for example so sledge is probably going to be a must pick on a lot of objectives as well so i'm keen to see how heavily is the defense going to lean into this it looks like the chiefs are pretty keen to actually extend so they're not necessarily going to lean into the claws for some of the more typical hatch positions instead they're going to go for the you know quote unquote ssg roam with the sledge in hand extension as well over towards strip as well so quite aggressive here from the chiefs Bouncing on the castle and Boydy on the pulse. Definitely expecting that aggression from the Chiefs here early on, despite being Church Arsenal. Should see them up and about roaming around. That repick did come through, of course. Sage now on to the Twitch. And even if the Chiefs don't really play too aggressive into this, even just running around and placing those castle barricades and uh, not necessarily faking the run, because obviously we can see some of them above, just it's about getting time off the Knights and forcing them to really clear. Worthy is really playing this though up above. Look for one and then basically go back down main stairs and, and book it back down to site. Doesn't get the one, now his position's known as well. So that kind of gives that up a little bit. Worthy is the strongest entry on the team and the oh. league, but it's Boydy to get the first. Good that's pulse a, from down below. It's a pulse. <laughs> Still two more Nitro Sales as well for the Chiefs, right? So that's one, and you've still got Boydy with that Cardiac Sensor, so it's not as if he's still no longer a threat anymore. All he has to do is call out that ping, and then a Digital or an Ethan could come over and, and throw their Nitro Sales as well. And Bouncing getting very aggressive. And there's only a minute and a half remaining. Knights have already lost Josh. For Church, Church Arsenal, this is not looking good at all, but Sage able to find the kill on to Bouncing over towards Strip, which we don't see that get played too often. Mm, not every day of the week you'll see the Strip Club that busy, especially this early in the night. Not much activity on that side of the map. Good little flick there, though, on the entry from Sage. Delayed trade, 4v4. Now the Knights can try to reposition themselves to get this round across the line. Going to be tricky, though. 60 seconds on the board. Don't quite know the status of Kitchen Hatch. I can only assume that that is still standing. Good little hunt there. Twitch drone down. Ethan's still with a Nitro, though. He can link up with Boyd. He's still feeding information on that Cardiac Sensor. He spots one at the bottom of the stairs. I don't know if someone, though, is playing for the pre-placed. Probably not. Ethan with a line of sight over towards Short. Probably in one of the more powerful positions as Boydie continues to feed information. And that mute jam on the wall preventing Triple from being opened. Only 30 seconds remaining in the round. Still four smokes available for the Knights here. If they do want to play into that late round execute, they will be able to block off plenty of lines of sight. Blew a big area to fight for, though. Worthy inside there at the moment. Does have to be careful. Could get caught here from both sides. Drop down into oil pit. Sage is that one. Takes a bit of damage. Ooh. Swing is not that successful, but now it is. Knights finding the frags that they needed to here in the late round push. Five seconds left in the round. Sage still pretty decent health worth, but they've not been able to find Boydy, and there's no time either. Boydy just barely stays alive. Chiefs take the first round. Well played by Boydy. Two players hunting that short position late into the round, and Sage a whisker away from being able to find that pick and the second player on the attack unable to follow up there. Well done by the Chiefs. I think the extension paid dividends. They wasted quite a bit of time and ultimately it was the clock that lost the round there for the Knights. Not that bad though, all things considered for the Knights. And we think back to Border last week against Elevate and really even in the majority of the rounds, they just really weren't that competitive. And while they maybe didn't get off to the best start they were able to claw things back, remembering they didn't have Josh, so no sledge. They couldn't really do a whole lot of work over towards the kitchen. Ultimately, they were able to respond and, and pick up some pretty decent frags towards the end of the round, and ultimately even ended up with 2v1, but just ran out of time, literally. And I, I guess that, though, in itself is a testament to the way that the Chiefs played the round, right? Heavy roam game, forcing Knights to clear, therefore took quite a lot of time. By the time they were even in a position to really head down to Church Arsenal. There was only like 40 seconds left and they hadn't really done much. We are going to see a bit of bar played though here by the defense. So the Chiefs not afraid to give the tertiary site an attempt. And it is a site that can be quite successful if you are 
good enough to hold up above. It does rely on this extension on being quite reliable. You need to be rock solid in, again, delaying a lot of time and preventing that vertical control from being obtained by the attack too early on. Otherwise, it allows players like Josh on the soft breach, Quiz as well, to get to work on that floor and flush out positions that are key on the objective itself. Probably see a bit of activity over towards garage, maybe even storage as well. Try and pinch this defense from sideways angles, front door as well. Always a good position to post up on the attack. As you can see, drones now scouting that top floor. Knights, again, probably wanting control of that quite swiftly. I'm assuming they'll attempt that approach from Jacuzzi across, but we'll have to see. It's obviously going to be quite tricky for them to get inside. Yeah, very curious to see how this plays out. Clearly, we don't see much bar stage, but the uh, the one round of it that has been played was uh, won by the defenders. And typically, in the past, you'd maybe think attackers would be able to take this side, but I think it's become one of those sites where because you don't see it played too often when the defensive team does pick it, clearly... They've got an idea as to why and uh, a strategy in place. And it's going to take Knights a bit of time here to, to clear out some of these positions and these players. Stiggs gets the opening pick onto Ethan. Almost catches Worthy Quiz. And now suddenly with a minute 25 seconds remaining in the round, it's the Knights looking in a better position. Juicy taken low. Good vert angle from Boydie. Is he thinking about a plant? Surely not. Trying to ascertain where this is. I think it's actually in the site. Worthy low on HP, though, finds that kill and Juicy shut down. No trade, of course, as the rest of the team's still isolated off site. But Josh is going to recollect that diffuser, try and stick it on the ground. What? And no one from the Chiefs can deny, as I say that, though, Bouncing finds the angle and finds the kill. But, but the problem right now for the Knights is they have not really been able to establish that vert control. And hence why, if you're just sitting in, in the middle of bar like that from above and, and so many different other angles, it's still not safe. And the Knights still have player over towards balcony, Stiggs over towards the hallway. They didn't really have the setup to even be able to respond. It almost seems like, okay, Chiefs have given you the site, and they're like, oh, all right, let's just go in and plant, and then they're dead. Stiggs to try and salvage the round, 30 seconds on the board. Potentially getting a call that there's one over towards the dummies, but he misses that shot. Now telegraphing his position to the rest of the Chiefs, who will sit back and wait for him to fall. And there we go, the Chiefs to take the round. Yeah, strange one. Considering, I think, within the first 45 seconds or so, Knights were looking pretty decent, got the opening pick. Thought that they were going to be able to try and really pick apart this Chiefs defense. But to the credit for the Chiefs, they're up. Uh, up a vertical hold actually played out quite perfectly, and the Knights just fell straight into it, going straight for a plan into bar. Hadn't cleared out uh, bedroom above, and, uh, and therefore basically got denied twice. And... Uh, yeah, kind of strange because, like, I mean, Boydie was just literally running around up there, shotgunning the floor while Quiz was on the balcony just chilling. I think the Knights simply didn't respect the vertical hold enough and thought they could maybe get away with something a little bit cheeky. And even once the first plan attempt was compromised and that player ultimately fell, I believe it was Juicy to drop first, they still decided to re-attempt and the pressure up above wasn't enough to facilitate that playstyle. So, unfortunate mistake there by the Knights, but... Clearly well held and well held by the Chiefs up above. Looking good here on this defensive start to Clubhouse. It can be sometimes difficult to obtain a bit of momentum on the attack here on this map, especially with the operators banned out that are. Ooh. So I believe has Sage just faked the repick. Started with Carly, thought about changing, and has stayed on the Carly. Obviously, we don't see it too much. This is mainly in response to the Kaid of Digital. There's no excuses for Digital. There are plenty of positions with these claws that shouldn't be allowing walls to get open. Not one going to be used on CC. Not really much of an issue for a bedroom defense. I think the mini game that is probably going to dictate the round jacuzzi. is Jacuzzi. Where has Digital placed the claws? Are they far enough away from the wall? Um, again, almost certain there's positions you can place them where the Kali isn't going to have much of an impact. So we'll have to see... Who can rain out on top of that one? Yeah, of course, Sage has been sort of almost painting out this Carly for the first couple of rounds, but elects to bring it this time around. Kind of slow through Garage at the moment here from the Knights, especially into CCTV, which has already been opened up. But they haven't really been able to clear out Cash and Top Red just yet. Bouncing's holding that even without a shield. Worthy inside of cash hasn't got much 
defensive options either. This is aggressive from the Chiefs, but Knights are just not really playing into it. I think the this Mugemis, is just so slow. Yeah, Mugem as well causing a bit of issues as they look to drone ahead. Only six left in the pocket now for the Knights. Bouncing still on this top stairs position. How many kills can Bounce and find? I feel like he's in such a powerful spot. Well, he could also get pinched. If, as soon as someone just decides to try and go in from below, well, now it all kicks off. Bouncer did get the elimination onto Stiggs. Diffuse are down. I think he may have to just rotate away from this position, though, give up top red. That's fine. Remember, it's uh, gym bedroom, so they don't necessarily need to hold top red and cash for all that much longer. A minute remaining, four versus four. You get rid of Stiggs. You do lose Worthy. That's not ideal if you are the Chiefs, but fortunately still complete site control here. And it's only now, with 50 seconds remaining, that the Knights are even going to, well, take a step into construction. I mean, they haven't got Jacuzzi open yet, have they? Like, this is not working out at all for the Knights. It's all about that prep work and setting yourself up for the late round trade. The Knights, yes, it's a four versus four, so in that sense, not looking too bad, but they have a lack of entry points and a lack of <laughs> pressure nade. in towards the site. Bouncing now chunked. That's a good little response from the Knights, but 30 seconds. Again, the clock is going to be their enemy. It was on that basement attack, and it may well be oh. what cost, cost them this round as well. That said, Ethan does fall, and the Knights could recover. Yeah, questionable from Ethan there. Maybe not the Chiefs were in the better position. Although, boy, he just with a quick double. Well, that's probably the round. It definitely is. Juicy's down as well, and it's only Josh that remains. Can go for the revive. No time. Needs to get the diffuser off him and go for the plant here. Ultimately, though, it is going to be the Chiefs once again. They are going to do the World Tour, although technically the World Tour is not completely over yet because there's a fourth site they can go to if they want to in Cash CCTV. Not sure if they will. Church Arsenal will be available once again. And so far, this is just all too easy for the Chiefs. It's a tale as old as time, isn't it? If you go up 3-0 when you start defense, you're in such a good position and the attack is scrambling now. Where are we going to find a win? How do we get ourselves back into this game? For the Chiefs, it's comfortable at the moment because in their mind, they're thinking, wow, that was pretty crazy. We can just repeat those same three defenses and we should be okay. Yes, the basement one was a little bit close, but I'm sure they'll tidy up that roam if they commit to it once more and they should be good. And to bring the castle, so suggesting that maybe we'll see a bit more of a traditional hold in the sense that hatches will be reinforced. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Again, leaning into that Kayid critical with the Thatcher and Maverick band, but it looks like they are actually going to commit to an extension. Ethan on the frost with the shotgun should be able to aid in making rotations. And I don't mind this approach, right? You're clearly on the front foot. You have some of the best fraggers in Bounce and Worthy in particular on your team. Why not back yourselves in and try and establish an even more dominant lead? We haven't seen much frost so far in 2022, guys. I think last year it was all about the fog mats and we saw them at SI and provided some really good laughs, but so far in 2022, not a whole lot of frost. Um, we'll see how it plays here from Ethan. In fairness, I don't think Clubhouse is generally the, the map where Frost is all that well known, but... Definitely not in basement. We'll see how this one does play out. And hey, it may catch the Knights off guard. So far, though, just having to point out some of the individual stats here, but Boydy 6-0-1 having a tremendous game as Digital does fall to Stiggs. Again, another opening kill for the Knights, but it's been a couple of rounds where they've not been able to convert that into round wins. We'll see how it goes here as Boydie over towards top red. And this has been the, the problem for the Knights. The Chiefs are just about anywhere and everywhere. Did Digital use his claws? He certainly didn't use one over towards bar hatch down into Moto. So if he hasn't used the other elsewhere, that's a big, big mistake. Uh, he did use kitchen. one in Kitchen at least, so that's something. Stock actually left soft, so can't use one there. So not the worst case scenario, but if there's any hatch that's really powerful with these bands on the board and Kaid available, it is the one that Josh is standing on right now. But that will allow Stiggs to come across use two summers if he wishes, or find a second kill, either or. That's his second now outside of this position, I believe, yeah. and the Chiefs feeding a little bit here. I think this is just one of those rounds where the Chiefs are getting a little overconfident with some of their positioning. They've done this before. Yeah. Knights play into it, though, to be fair. They've yep. just kind of pulled it back a little bit, taken a bit more time, understanding Chiefs are roaming around, Chiefs are looking for kills, they're being aggressive, let's punish them, hold decent angles, and then basically just walking into Stiggs' sight line. And now the Knights have a two-man advantage for Church Arsenal. This is very, very winnable. And yet you still got Boydie up in cash. Obviously, this could be the difference maker to get Chiefs back into the round, but it does leave Sight vulnerable. Six kills for Boydie. Looking to add on to that tally. One of the newest members on this team. Left up above, uncontested and worthy. 
one of the best players in the whole league. Still alive down on site. So yes, it's a five versus three. He's got a rotate. The Knights have looked a little bit shaky here. Boydie looking to progress forward. Josh falling. Not the worst case scenario. Doesn't Wait. get... Confirmed. Oh, Sage to trade. Well, they've, they've got the numbers. They know they have the numbers because they know Boyd is up above. What a stern from Sage. Yeah, and Boyd is too late now dropping down Oil Pier. Obviously, you can only do so much when your teammates on site can't win any of the, the gunfights. But at that point, Knights knew that Boydie was top floor. That they had the... Oh, oh. my God. Boyd has just switched on. 8-0 and 1. And maybe just keeps this alive. Both over towards main. It doesn't matter. Juicy's still on site. But still... They had a five on two advantage, guys. Of course, they were going to drop Moto Hatch and, and use their numbers to just overwhelm Site. The only reason I thought that maybe the Chiefs could get back into that round was simply because they had five players alive and no one was on drones. When Josh got uh, was swung upon there and um, taken down, I was questioning, do Knights know that this is going to come through? And that's why I was almost about to say before everything unfolded, Josh falling here, not the worst case because it means someone's actually forced to sit on cameras instead of everyone being a sitting duck. Ultimately, didn't really play out that way as the Knights actually played it quite well, flooding side and forcing trades, etc., and not allowing Boydie to get back to side in time. But yeah, obviously uh, an interesting dynamic to think about. Sometimes having five members up on the attack, if you're not committing someone to drones, you can falter to cheeky roams and cheeky flanks like that. But clearly the Knights switched on, ready to go. Finally getting something on the board. Um, they haven't, in my opinion, been playing horribly so far. Just been sort of failing to get the checklist complete. They did it on that round, it paid off. Yes, the Chiefs fed a little bit, but Knights were the capitalize, as you mentioned. Yeah, I didn't think the opening round for the Knights was all that awful and maybe don't have the Bar most stage. amount of experience on bar stage. And, and it kind of seemed that way. Jim Bedroom was a little bit concerning, but you know, I think they played that much better in the fourth round. But for the Chiefs, of course, it's so obvious to just go straight back Play this one a little bit safer, a little bit smarter. All right, boys, we had a bit of a fun round that time. Got a little antsy. Let's just hone it in a little bit. And I think that's going to be the recipe for the Chiefs in this fifth round. If the Knights do go back to back, though, in Church Arsenal, it does kind of shake things up a little bit because they only need the two rounds in this first half. Two would be quite remarkable, really, considering the start and the Chiefs looking so strong, but... It would be big for the Knights, and it's a big match for them to keep their playoff dream alive, really. If they lose this matchup, we could say with pretty fair confidence that the top four and the bottom floor are essentially locked in. A couple of permutations to that, and it might not necessarily play out that way, but just based on a, a, a mathematical standpoint, that would probably be how it's going to play out. So big opportunity here for the Knights and a big run home. A lot of tough games for this team. Arguably having, having one of the easier draws to start off the stage. Still struggling a little bit though, as they look to fight, try and oh. really lock in this roster. But Josh locks in that pick. Boyd is shut down as well. Critically, the top fragger currently and one of the more dangerous players. Oh, and Worthy's gone too as well. That is a disaster for the Chiefs. It seems as if they haven't necessarily learned the lessons that they were given in the fourth round. Still trying to play a bit of that top floor roam game. And both players going down so easily. Bouncing probably should have died there as well. All things considered, Quiz unfortunate to not get that elimination. Will that come back to bite the Knights? I don't think so. Not at this point. A very low health bouncing. In a three versus five. And it's two rounds in a row on Church Arsenal where the, the Chiefs have just been a bit sloppy. One of the biggest threats for the Knights so far has been the clock, the, the time expiring and then being able to, unable to get rounds across the line or being pressured into pushes that aren't going to work out. Last couple of rounds though, the Chiefs have been feeding these picks and now time is on the side of the Knights. Still 50 seconds to work with, a two player advantage. Ethan could look to turn the tide. Still has a Nitro in hand down below, looks to maybe blow it and does. Josh, take, Josh takes a chunk of damage, but he'll survive. And now it's really a Knight's round to convert. You have 40 seconds, yep. a little bit of hard breach available as well. Dealing with triple might be tough. Still an Electro Claw on that wall, but from this position, you need to be able to trade out rounds. I was going to say, besides Bounce and Digital Ether, not exactly the fraggers on this team. Attackers have located a bomb. Yeah, and Bouncing was low health as well, so you probably weren't expecting him to be able to get a whole lot. Josh just straight into <laughs> Arsenal. Bye bye, Ethan. Sit down. Digital gets one, makes it a one versus three. Could play a little bit to the time advantage that he has. Only 10 seconds left. The rotate, though, unsuccessful. Still oh, no. Towards main. No. Oh. It is just, oh, my goodness. No. I was expecting Stiggs to maybe swing that one a little, little earlier. Instead, held the angle. And then, yeah, last second, made the little, little shuffle over. Well, 
two rounds in a row for the Knights, how quickly the story can change. Suddenly, it's turned out to be a pretty decent first half. Too many early trades going the way of the Knights, or too many early picks, not even trades. Knights in runs four and five getting free, easy opening kills, and no response from the Chiefs, who are flailing around a little bit off site, and then trying to double down and find unrealistic trades back in response. Um, like in that last round, for example, I think it was bouncing on blue right. You called that he should have died. He hundred percent should have. But he was also playing out in the open to desperately find something in response because two of his teammates had died so early into the round. So there's a lot of pressure at the moment being applied on these anchors for the chase in sight. It's clearly not doing them any favors. And now's our opportunity to do a quick reset, go back to bar, a site that was clearly quite successful for the Chiefs. And Made the Knights look a little bit silly in their attempts to try and get the planet down despite vertical pressure. So, good opportunity for the Chiefs to extend that lead again. 4-2. But at the moment, the Knights have probably already reached the pass mark, especially considering they lost the first three rounds. This should have been a definitive half to the Chiefs, but it probably won't be the case. Well, no cash CCTV, which was a little topic on the desk when we had that new graphic. It was, I believe, I want to say off the top of my head, I think 33% defensive win rate from the very small sample size, but still kind of interesting regardless, because in the past it has been one of the more sites that we see defenders go to, and while well, the Chiefs have avoided it completely, and yet another opening kill the way of the Knights. This is an area that they've been very successful in here in this first half, and it's got to be concerning for the Chiefs. Big game so far as well for Stiggs, highlighted by the desk as potentially underperforming, coming into the day with a 0.86 GG rating, negative 7 KD, has been feeling a little bit more of a support role, so understandable, but clearly stepping up here in this game and his team needs him. 7-4 so far, and a couple of opening kills to boot as well. He can now chill out, play that Tokovi role, and try to locate where these Chiefs members are. Plenty up above to be picked apart, but it's juicy to be traded out by Bouncing with the UMP. Quiz looks to follow up, but Bouncing gets a second in the meantime. Quiz needs to commit forward. There's a player to his left. Finds that one, but needs to be mindful of the oh direct trade God. from Worthy. Now it's Stiggs. He opened the account for the Knights, but now needs to finish it out. Yeah, and for anyone that maybe questions this Chiefs roster, the power of Bouncing and Worthy is very strong. They have very good franking power. And just like that can win you a round single-handedly, or in their case, I guess double-handedly, because they just basically have won this round for the Chiefs. I mean, Stig's still alive in a one versus two, but 100% back in bouncing and digital in this situation, unless Stig's can force two 1v1s. Does have a minute remaining, and Diffuser here over towards Jacuzzi, but his position well and truly known. Digital and Bouncing just need to relax here. Hopefully by now they've bunkered down in positions that allow a trade to be facilitated. Stiggs looking to isolate those picks. It's the only way he can win this round. Find the first pick, reset, reposition, try and find the second or force a plant. But he only has 30 seconds, needs to act quick. And I think main stairs is probably going to be his play. Knights are on the cams now. 30 seconds left. As diffused up, but ultimately has not been able to clear out any of the positions of Digital and Bouncing. Time of the Essence, now in towards Bar. Makes his way over towards Stage, really just trying to find an angle here that he can get this plant down without being stopped by the Chiefs. But he is stopped. Bouncing was not too far away. And through the smoke, finds the elimination. It's a 4-2 half for the Chiefs, as expected. That's kind of par for the course, though, here on Clubhouse. We'll get some more answers here in the second half. Yeah, I think that basically neutralizes the scoreline at the moment as we head into the second half. It should have been more Chiefs dominant, though. A 3-0 start and a couple yeah. of thrown rounds in the sense that they lost picks early. A little bit concerning for the Chiefs, and they may come to regret allowing those rounds to unfold the way in which they did. For the side of the Knights, though, a good recovery effort. Still getting two on the board. Quite an impressive feat. And if the trend continues of Clubhouse being a little bit more attacker favored, as we saw in the one and only place so far in this stage. Well, hey, maybe, you know, the, I mean, sorry if it ends up being a little bit more <laughs> defender-sided. Um, 
then they might be okay. Well, I've just completely flipped the narrative there because heading into today, it actually was attack decided, right? So still getting a feel for it. Speaking of trends, Stiggs with four opening kills in that first half. Knights with five of the six rounds. So concerning for the Chiefs, that could very well just be an attacker thing. But I think for me, that just kind of says the Chiefs' roam game got really shut down. That was the difference. And that was probably what stopped the Chiefs from being able to get, say, a 5-1 scoreline. Really, the Knights and their ability to find those opening picks, really keeping them win, ke keeping them in with a fighting chance. Obviously, some of the late round execution in the first three rounds did let them down a little bit, but you know, ultimately they were fighting tooth and nail. Oh no way! The Chiefs are going in for a little rush here. They don't have diffuser though with this position of Boydie, and Boydie is oh. just straight away dead by Juicy. Oh, Stiggs as well with a nitro onto Ethan. So the sneaky attempt to get in towards the site, establish a foothold and try and get that diffuser down. It's foiled by the Knights. What? Another round where the Chiefs lose it in the first 30 but, seconds. But it's another round, guys, where the Chiefs are the ones trying to do something. Fair enough, you give teams credit when they want to try something, but it's another round where it hasn't worked out. And it's another round where they're two players down to the good at the start. It's another round where the Knights have got the opening pick. Again, worrying signs. And I hate to say it, but attack clubhouse is probably not the point where you really want to be trying to do too much because all it takes is one death and suddenly now Church Arsenal almost impossible to do. And it very much is going to be considered impossible. Knights don't have to do anything now. They can have all five players on site and basement. Don't have to leave the area. They will have the, uh, the numbers. Don't generally see attacking teams win a 3v5 Church Arsenal. Would tend to agree, and there's still plenty of utility available for the defense to nitro cells. The BPC scattered somewhere inside that objective by Josh as well. So no excuses for the Knights to lose it from this point onwards. No reason to play overly aggressive, to play tight knit, try and find trades. Chiefs though, the opposite game for them, looking to isolate picks. Vert could be critical as Worthy tries to open up the hatch. Sage. Oh, I thought Sage was maybe going to impact trick, but no, it's an Electro Claw from Juicy. Plays that well. Worthy's going to try and respond and use an Xkaris on the floorboards. The explosion radius may be enough to get rid of that Electro Claw, but I kind of doubt it. Oh, got oh, it. That said, he does actually find it. He won't get the score notification for that, though. So Worthy, if he wants to know if the hatch is, in fact, able to be opened, needs to physically make that rotation. And he has four Xkaris. And there's the impact as well. The drop on the hatch, Sage to collect, manages to find a couple, downs one more. That's his second for the round, of course, and now bounce and strain it over towards Moe. Ultimately, though, that's where having the numbers for the Knights is proving to be the difference point because it's still a two-player advantage for the Knights. Juicy, though, will finish off bouncing and finish off this round. Knights will get round number seven, and they've suddenly now won three of the last four rounds. I don't know if it's tactical timeout territory yet, guys, but it, it feels like it's maybe getting to that position if this continues to just go the way of the Knights, especially defense clubhouse. But uh, ultimately, again, the damage done in the early portion of this game. I wouldn't say it's panic stations just yet for the Chiefs, but if they lose this round, it certainly must be, especially if the Chiefs throw early picks. That's three rounds now. Yep. Three of the four losses, in particular, where they have lost early picks with no trade, and it's been not quite a free round for the Knights, but as close to a free round as you're going to get after putting in the hard yards early. So, very disappointing from the Chiefs. This is not the sort of disciplined play style that we've come accustomed to this team, where they're able to bunker down on defenses, waste time on roams, and min out 5v5 trades. Instead, they're, I don't know, a little bit lost in the source, it looks like, and clearly the Knights, after... A bit of a woeful start, have yep. well and truly switched on to this playstyle and been able to shut it down. And bringing it sort of to maybe a bit more of a positive light, but it's good to see Stiggs playing well. I think there's been questions asked in the first two weeks about some of his performances and has stood up in a big way tonight. Not just finding kills, but finding a lot of these in the early portions of these rounds. A big reason why the Knights have been able to get into these winning positions is because Stiggs has been able to find a lot of these opening picks. Uh, and Sage, of course, when Sage plays well, then the Knights play well. Uh, so, I mean, it's just generally a common trope there for the Knights. If, if Sage is on, the Knights are on. Ethan bringing the Kali as well. But it's up to the Chiefs now to sort of be a little bit more proactive in the sense of just actually finding these opening picks, being more involved in the opening portion of these rounds and not giving away things for free as they get kennels opened up super early on into the round two minutes and 20 left as we head to cash cctv for the first time in this clubhouse game hasn't quite been a defender's paradise in recent times 
Intriguing from Sage on the Knights, opting to use both Electro Claws on each of the garage doors down below, as opposed to kennels or out of construction. And I guess he's reading into the fact that Carly's probably going to be played here by uh, one of the attackers and not wanting to run that risk of the claw being taken down when it could be used elsewhere in relative safety. You can place them on top of that garage balcony and there's nothing that Carly can do about that. It does mean, obviously, Kennels is exposed and quite early into the round, so the cross now compromised for the Knights. And the Chiefs are going to look to lean into that, probably post I up side of player. You can see Bouncing on the rappel. And the rest of the team is going to rotate over towards construction, probably open up in towards cash, expose those box positions, and think about getting a plant down. That might force a rotation of those claws from Sage. He has already picked up one. But again, this interesting little hard breach mini game, as often is the tale here on Clubhouse, probably going to dictate who wins the round. I don't mind this though from the Chiefs. It feels like the first round in a, in a while where they're just playing a little bit more careful, cautious. <sighs> Taking their time. <laughs> oh, Ethan sees it. Oh, he cops it back the other way. And he's not really going to be able to have that sort of free reign to peek now because he is so low. It's worthy, the one that's feeling like he wants to peek in oh, as Quiz no. gets rid of Ethan. Oh, the Chiefs okay. might just be crumbling here towards the end of this round because Quiz on the flank has caught them off guard. Oh, Worthy's got no idea where he is. Two big kills for Quiz. And again, the Knights are just steamrolling the Chiefs. Digital and Bounce and once more left to clutch up this round. It's fallen to pieces and they still don't know where this Roma's position. Digital will need to face check these angles with 25 seconds on the clock. If he wins this engagement, there's uh, still a uh, glimmer of hope, but it's no looking time. tough. Flash sent out over towards Bathroom. Should flash that player, it does. Digital will find the kill. Now 15 seconds left. Bounce and spotted inside of Garage will need to perform a miracle. Haven't even cleared out the plane rafters. Stiggs should be able to just stand up and get a free kill. Doesn't quite yet straight away, but now does so after a few shots missed. Knights now make it four of the last five rounds here on Clubhouse. It is becoming their fun house. And it's getting a little worrisome for the Chiefs. Remember, they're not exactly a lock for top four just yet. And if you lose this, suddenly Knights go to nine points and have the tiebreaker. Not in a position that you want to be. Certainly not a lock-in, and the Knights aren't locked out. So this is a game with huge playoff ramifications, and the Chiefs have not been on their game at all in the last few rounds. Big mistakes made in that round. Ethan, for example, dropping the construction balcony, trying to make his way through on that cross. He realized halfway through, oh, I should probably peek this to make sure I don't die. And rightly so. Then he gets lit up, tries to make the cross a second time and shut down. That meant that the construction wall couldn't get opened. And amidst all that chaos, I can only assume the comms were a little bit cluttered and they were a little bit um, confused and trying to work out what the next move was going to be. Amongst all that, Quiz just crept up the stairs mm. and sealed the deal for the Knights. So it's been a tale of Chiefs making these mistakes, being pressured into them, rightly so, by the Knights. And the Knights switched on, ready to go, reading into that, capitalizing. And the scoreboard's starting to reflect that now. I, I am surprised it probably took that long for a tactical. Probably should have been done the round previous as there was a bit of a streak established by the Chiefs, but they did finally call it. So good that they're not sitting on that. And hopefully that's offered an opportunity for them to perform a reset and have a fresh mind heading into this round. Just should mention, of course, with the Chiefs, they play Elevate in play day six and then IG in play day seven. So. Not a given. It's not like they've got any freebies remaining that they can sort of bank on to get them over the line, Guz. And, you know, Elevate, of course, uh, well, they play IG tonight. And then obviously there's that Chiefs game. That Chiefs game between IG and Elevate, uh, if the Knights win this, well, that could end up being to, <laughs> the, the final spot. It could be Elevate or Chiefs. Really, when you think about the overall standings here, just for a brief second, it feels like a top five, doesn't it? Someone has to miss out. Right now, the current standings, it's the Knights. But who knows where that's going to be by play day seven. A win here set them up massively. Yeah, Again, they have, they have a tough road home. It is the toughest road home for any team. But if they do it here, the <laughs> I mean, the last couple of weeks really opens up for them. And it would be tough to rule them out. So far today, they're playing some pretty damn good siege. Much better than last week's border, that's for sure. Infinitely better. 
Well, can the Chiefs respond? Little tactical timeout, maybe a little bathroom break as well for Digital and to just breathe and also maybe deny some of this momentum that the Knights have been able to build up in the last couple of rounds. Four of the last five rounds now to the Knights. Kind of feels like if it hadn't been for some of the, the pesky bar stage play of the Chiefs, this could have actually been way more sided to the Knights here on Clubhouse. Jacuzzi being worked by the Chiefs, though, and it's a good effort so far. An entry point established, and now they can begin to pr pressure in towards bathroom. Waldo is electrified. Sage likely holding that position. Or, or Sticks with those Bandit's batteries. Ooh, Stiggs with oh, a Nitro, the me. power of the Bandit, worthy taken down. Stiggs has been having such a huge impact on the entries here, whether it be attack or now whether it be on the defense. Yeah, uh, difference maker tonight, Stiggs, and uh, just a different player, it feels like, tonight. Now up to 10, 6, and 3. But again, when sometimes you look at the numbers and you think, oh, okay, they're having a great game. The impact, though, of those numbers and those eliminations from Stiggs is... A ridiculous amount of opening picks that he's been able to find. It's now up to five opening kills in the first nine Ooh. rounds. That is a staggering number. And on both sides of the coin, attack and defense. And the Chiefs, I, I'm just going to be honest, it feels like this entire match they've been playing a man down because the Knights keep getting the opening pick. Bouncing at the top of main stairs. The Chiefs looking to pressure these positions. Oh. But Juicy with the shotgun blasts him in the face. Josh as well onto Boydie. And once more, the Chiefs stumbling on the final stages of an attack. 30 seconds on the board. Oh, Sticks finds on. another. Makes it to It's flawless for the Knights. And it's so tough to see the Chiefs coming back from this. I think they're... I'm almost, almost ready to count them out. This is staggering. This is very, very concerning because obviously Knights on the defense here on Clubhouse. I will say that if there is any sort of last semblance of hope here for the Chiefs, Guz, is the fact that the Chiefs started with three defensive round wins. Knights have now also started with three defensive round wins. If there is a chance that they come back, it has to be in this 10th round. Otherwise, it's match point and one point confirmed and... and secured for the Knights, plus OT at minimum. But otherwise, this is well and truly getting away from the Chiefs. I'm not saying it will have ramifications for top four, but it puts them into a position where they probably didn't want to be. I don't know what the percentage or the, the likelihood of top four would have been by winning tonight. I think it would have almost been 99% secured. And now that's no longer going to be the case. <sighs> Imagine we look back at this game and it's... The one in which decides who makes the top four and doesn't, because there is a very real possibility these teams finish fourth and fifth, respectively, in what order oh. this match could determine that. The head to head is so critical in a single round robin, seven payday season. Yep. The head to head is often one of the most critical measures as to where you finish. Obviously, points come first, and the head to head a very close second. And we've seen really tight finishes in the past across the entire league. Probably not the case in this first stage, but again, that fourth, fifth discussion, particularly between these two, is massive. And the Chiefs at the moment, they have been asleep at the wheel in the last few rounds, and the Knights, particularly Stiggs, really switched on. Yep. It does somewhat go against the grain, too. I mean, to be fair, when you look at the, the Chiefs' last three games, Fury, Renatus, and Wildcard, the bottom three teams in the standings. So... And they lost to the Die Wolves. In some ways, being completely honest here, they haven't beaten a good team yet. So the Chiefs now obviously playing Knights. Then they've got Elevate. Then they've got IG. There's going to be a lot of questions and answers over the next three play days for the Chiefs. Can they muster up a response here, though? Round 10 to deny match point away from the Knights. The penultimate match point round. Sometimes the most critical, particularly in securing momentum. Overtime. We don't know what that is here in Apex South. That's yeah. not in the, the realm of conversation <laughs> so far. Hard to believe, but it has just been the tail. Stiggs. We've had more forfeits than overtimes. <laughs> <laughs> Stiggs over to a stock will drop, but still a Roma here for the Knights. Josh up above that needs to be dealt with. That's a, that, that was a decent fun fact for you. That was. That was the, that was the Xenox fun fact without me actually saying it. Retroactive one. Oh, this so... Uh, concerning for the Chiefs, but I think one little shining light is the fact that they haven't had anyone 
fall just yet. Minute 10 seconds remaining in this 10th round. Josh still not cleared out of construction is concerning, but at least five players alive at this point in the round for the Chiefs is something. But I am worried about this Josh rotate late round. It could be so concerning. It could be so damaging for the Chiefs. I wonder, did the Chiefs get rid of that Electro Claw? The double nade from the sledge to try and open up Modo. Oh, oh my God. Talk about opening. Quiz to open the account again for Eaton's the Knights. Down. It's a double for the Knights to open up the round. This has happened so many times. They get three. The Chiefs are bleeding players. It's only digital in a one versus five. It's going to be match point for the Knights and they are on the verge of all three points here on Clubhouse. It's another flawless back-to-back -back flawless rounds. It's now six of the last seven rounds to the Knights. It's not Clubhouse, it's a slaughterhouse. <sighs> wow, the Knights had to step up today to kickstart their chance to make the playoffs and to make the first major of 2022. And they are putting on a show right now. Didn't look like they were in the server in the first few rounds, the first three rounds, unable to get a win. Now they're making it look like the Chiefs have turned off their monitors. This is such a flipping momentum. I cannot believe what we're seeing right now. Stiggs as well, stepping up 12-6 and the rest of the team showing up too. In the last round, Chris was the one under the spotlight getting that opening kill to open up things for the Knights and it has happened so many times a five versus three as the first initial push comes through putting the Chiefs on the back foot in a position that 99% of the time you are not going to win and it's been closed out every single time by the Knights mm -hmm. six for the scoreline they've yeah, secured at least one point but they need to push for a regulation win here for the Knights anything well, less well. and that still might not be enough for top four I can't quite recall the social vote going into this game. I think it was around 65% of the Chiefs. They were yep. quite heavily mm -hmm. favoured and rightfully so. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people at the conclusion of this game, but if you're a Knights fan, you couldn't be happier with this result. Not only if they obviously go and get this win, get all three points, but it's a big team to be knocking off knowing then you've still got to go next week and you've got IG. Then the final play day, you've got the Dire Wolves. I think it gets to a point where if they can win one of those two now, that might be top four. Not a given. Sage and Digital. And Sage wins out that one. Digital just taking a, a bit longer here to get open kennels this time around. But yeah, this the the ramifications this has for the, the top four standings is pretty big. Because I think by tonight, I was almost expecting top four to be done and dusted. I was yep. expecting Chiefs <laughs> to be on 12 points, Knights on six. Uh, yeah, crazy. The crystal ball is telling me that it is going to be count. It's going to be count back to this head-to-head. -head. There is a real possibility they finish on the same amount of points. Neither team has an amazing run home in terms of the difficulty of their opposition. It's going to be quite tough. So imagine they finish on equal points, and because the Knights snatches victory, a recovery from an 0-3, they end up winning that position. That said, finally the Chiefs respond. Worthy did fall, but he wasn't secured. Quiz was though. So the Chiefs now with a man advantage for the first time in what feels like an absolute eternity. Yeah. And it probably does for them as well. Well, technically the first time since round eight. It was just a round that was not converted, though, in the way of the Chiefs. But yeah, I mean, it's it's been now just the third opening kill of this entire game for the Chiefs. Every other round going the way of the Knights. It does kind of feel like, <laughs> for the first time in a while, Knights have got maybe a bit of pressure here. Not only with the Chiefs with the opening pick, but also just positioning, opening up quite a lot of these angles here. Sage has been able to fall back over towards Cash. In fact, very stacked over to the north side here. Top red, Cash for the Knights. Could backfire considering they've only got the four players. If Rafters gets cleared, Chiefs could be well on the money here to get this round and keep this game alive. Misplaced, misplaced an aid from Ethan trying to find a player in towards Cash. That may have been useful over towards Rafters, but Boydie still has one in the pocket. That's going to be critical. Stiggs, the star player for the Knights this game, okay, now in one of the most above. key positions to resist this push. 
Oh, they all just rush in, and Josh wasn't full white, but he couldn't land the shots immediately. Stigs eventually does go down. They overwhelm Rafter. Oh. Big Nitro Cell. Boy to Ethan on the floor. Juicy, though, now in a one versus two. Worthy's low. 12 seconds, so not much time, but Digital is the one that comes up with a big time shot. 6 5. We are now one round away from potentially our first OT of the stage. Bold statement there from the Chiefs, opening up the breach and then sending it through. That was risky. They elected not to go through Garage and apply pressure onto Stiggs, who was, of course, shut down. So it did work out there for the attack, the Nitro Cell from Juicy. I thought that may have really ended it all and closed out the map, but doesn't quite have as much of an impact as Juicy would have intended. Now the Chiefs within a reaching distance, they can try and grasp an overtime here. Again, for the Chiefs, max points is not a necessity. It, it would have been nice. Mm. But what's more important, again, is that head-to-head. -head. For the Knights, however, I'm doubtful that two points will be enough, no. especially if the trend continues throughout the league of overtimes being immensely rare. It statistically is not going to work out well for them if, if they do get the OT win. So for the Knights and for their stage, I'm not going to say it's a must-win round, but it's very close to being so. So this is a, a huge round. Could well be the biggest. Yeah, I think it's less important for the Chiefs. If the Chiefs can at least claw back and get a two-point win here, they're pretty happy with that. I think 11 points at that point will be enough. But yep. yeah, you're right. Knights need all three. There's a world in which I think, considering how top-heavy this stage is, the team in fifth could actually miss out with you know 10 to 12 points or so. So you need everything that you can get. Of course. Oh, oh, boy. Where is that from? Stiggs has got another one. He, <laughs> it, like, what's the record for a single player in terms of opening kills? Like, obviously, that's not a stat we're going to have on hand. But Stiggs is up to six now of 12. That's half of this game. Stiggs has been the one to get the opening kill. You're doing well enough if, as a team, you're getting half the opening kills. Stiggs alone is achieving that. And I'm sure on top of that, a lot more rounds have gone to the Knights as well. And that's been the tale thus far. The Chiefs often on the back foot having to recover rounds instead of being more proactive on these attacks. It's also a hard breach down worthy. One of the best players in the league shut down five and 10 in this match thus yeah, far. Yes, fun. yes, he's fulfilling hard breach, but that is uncharacteristic, almost unheard of worthy to perform that poorly in any match. I have at least had Boydie stand up, though. Uh, generally, I'd say you'd almost flip those kind of numbers. I mean, Boydie's maybe not unnecessarily 5 and 10, but if Worthy's output has diminished a little bit here in this game, at least Boydie's has maybe gone up a bit. Bouncing's still doing bouncing things. Quiz avoids that. Time, though, is going to soon become a factor once again. Boydie, top red, play inside he's a good cash. Spot. He's about to open it up. Didn't quite see him, though. In fact, I'm not sure if he even knows he's there. Quiz eventually does go down. I think that was the player inside a cash. Josh watching from Con. He goes for the rotate. Minute and eight seconds left. It's now a four versus four for the verge of OT. Do we head there or not? Remains to be seen. And the next minute will give us an answer. The Knights retreat. They fall back. Sanctuary over towards Logistics. And the western side of the objective, Jacuzzi not being opened up. And the Knights can lean into that. I'm really looking at logistics to be the point in which the attack can either make or break this round. Ethan looking to head the charge, no nades in hand. So the Chiefs need to back their fragging of power against Juicy. Oh, that is so aggressive from Juicy. Didn't need to swing that early. Still had a Nitrosol and elected to swing, feeling the pressure and just sort of bit. Bouncing with two quick kills. Josh stuck over towards top main. 25 seconds remaining. It's suddenly the Chiefs that have the numbers advantage. That nade is right on top of him. Ooh. We head to overtime for the first time in this stage. And that begs the ultimate question. Is that maybe the theoretical nail in the coffin for this stage for the Knights? Is it realistic for them to make the top four? I would assume that it's still mathematically possible, but that percentage has got to be real small. Even if they go on to win this head-to-head, -head, it's going to be tough if the teams around them continue to perform well. So that's disaster for the Knights, but well played by the Chiefs. Need to locate Could still end up being mitigated disaster, though, if they can get two points from this. I, it, one point's definitely not going to be enough. You may as well almost just put that down as a loss in the end, but at least two points keeps you in the conversation. 
From a technical standpoint, guys, two points. I mean, heck, at this point, one point gets them into the top four, but Alivate still to play later tonight. Of course, they do play IG, and then they play the Chiefs, but they have Fury in play day seven. So you can at least give Alivate probably three points there. That puts them on nine. Nine's the benchmark. Can the Knights get over nine? Yeah, they can. Like This is the thing. Technically, even if they walk away with one point, then get three points from one of their last two play days, that could still be top four. So... The, the, the thing, though, for the Knights, again, it goes back to that head-to-head. -head. Yes, they're equal on points with Elevate, but they lost that. Wildcard as well, close behind if they have a decent run home. Well, they lost get that. Over, yeah, but they'd get so, over nine, right? Like, if, if let's say Elevate end this stage on nine points, right? Let's say they lose to IG and they lose to the Chiefs, but they beat Fury, that's nine points. Knights need to get over that. Right now, they've got seven. So that's kind of the world they're in. So it's not do or die. Even just getting this one point is something. IG dive was top two teams, though, to close it out. Tough for the Knights. Very tough. Yeah. And is. they're not playing like a top two team. I kind of... Well, honestly, a couple, a couple of minutes ago, they weren't too far <laughs> off it. No. <laughs> <laughs> now the tables turn. Yeah. Doesn't take a bit, a bit of a weird game like that. They went six of seven rounds, and then the Chiefs just close out and get two in a row just like that. We head to OT. And this is, this is less so about the Chiefs now. Chiefs get the one point. That gets them to 10. They're, they're pretty good from here, you would think. Don't do live math on broadcast. We've learnt that lesson. <laughs> we won't say anything definitive until it flashes up on, on Liquipedia. <laughs> but you are right. Ooh. It will be good. And Boydie stepping up. 12-8. A strong performance for him. Where other players may have dropped off a little bit, he has filled those big shoes that the likes of Worthy yep. and maybe Ethan as well have left behind. A good opening duel. And that's well played. Just feels like the last few rounds, the Chiefs have really slowed things down. In some ways, trying to force more mistakes out of the Knights and then punish it. Rotero goes in from Ethan, doesn't get a whole lot of information. Eventually, does get shot out. Still has two more in the back pocket. Minute 10, ending in the round. And still three Nitrous Owls available for the Knights. So defensively equipped to deal with this vert pressure from the Chiefs. They really get into position here over towards Kitchen, expecting the Knights to start to some of those nitro cells and see if they can find a freebie from below. Oh. Oh. Quiz. That's a freebie over towards top red. Bouncing left. Straggling down below. 40 seconds now on the clock. Four versus four. It resets a little bit here, but the Chiefs still need to work hard breach. Electro claws have been so difficult for these attackers to deal with. No Kaid. Oh, there's is one. Favorable for the attack. And you can see they're struggling to deal with it. Juicy and Stiggs to find kills in the meantime. Now Didge and Worthy to clutch. And Quiz still has one more Nitro Cell available too. So the boom's not over just yet. Sage gets rid of Worthy. Ten seconds left. Well, there's no time at all here for Digital to clutch a one versus three. Easy elimination for Juicy. Knights fans wondering why you couldn't just do that in the last couple of rounds. Nice, clean, flawless in the end. Well, not flawless, but pretty clean round it on Church Arsenal. And it's match point once again for the Knights. Well played by the Knights. Able to recover the main disadvantage early on in that round. They forced the 4v4 and the Kaid causing issues late, seeping in to the time available to the Chiefs' attack. They leaned into it nicely and forced some awkward engagements to get that one across the line. Now they have the lead on the attack. Need to Head over to bedroom now. So two different sites selected here in overtime. Chiefs backing themselves upstairs. You think back to the first half, which was uh, a little while ago now, but it was 2-1 on Church Arsenal in favor of the Knights. So defensively, the Chiefs just not a sound Arn in Church Arsenal, so electing to head to Gym Bedroom may just be the play. How do the Knights play into this, seeing the, the Ash and the Finker getting re-picked? The Finker's an interesting one, though. Do we see the Knights really play off those Adrenal Searches early in the round? They've been very good at the start of these rounds, getting these opening picks. Does that allow them to, to really peak Balcony and, and go for some of these shots with that boost?
the Knights won't want to lose it from here. They've already had a couple of match point attempts thus far that they haven't been able to get across the line. And this is, much like the previous match point in regulation, season defining. Two points might still be enough for them, but one, I mean, you'd almost be able to rule them out from that point, I would imagine. They would need... And the Knights weren't able to close it out first time. Maybe second time is the charm. Not just sell in hand from Digital, expecting a bit of aggression from that balcony position, but nothing just yet there yet. It's all over towards Kennels for the Knights so far. And it's Sage who finds the opening pick. And it's the Knights once again who have that early advantage. Ooh. And they will continue to snowball that advantage now by getting rid of Boydy. Arguably, the two best fraggers in this match for the Chiefs now taken <sighs> off the oh. board. And Worthy, Jeez. while he's struggling for kills, he's almost gone for the team kill. Jump scared me, and I'm sure Ethan was frightened by that as well. Worthy was in a good spot, but forced back. Good droning from the Knights. Good discipline. They have time. They have the manpower. But they just need to be patient and ensure that they get this opportunity across the line. They have faulted it twice before. They will not want to make that same mistake again. The pincer on towards Ooh. site, but worthy. He's been so quiet. This is his opportunity to shine. You need your star player to stand up. Worthy generally does so, but hasn't quite been able to thus far and the pressure mounting time though is maybe on their side at least there's only 30 seconds left final adrenal surge used by quiz juicy over towards this balcony position looking inwards now to bedroom can't find anything just yet worthy and digital really needing to really play off of each other and at least get a trade if one goes down early but i think the knights just have too many angles covered here too many methods of entry onto site sage drops lo he gets oh, straight in he's got the quad give him the ace where's worthy where's that mvp quiz does not give the ace they don't care about those things they want wins they want points and they get two of them in this ot victory against the chiefs the knights with a massive result they'll be kicking themselves a bit though guys because i think they probably thought they should have got all three a regulation win for the knights would have been Absolutely monumental, but winning it over time, still a nice little jump start to their stage one campaign. They just keep their chances of the playoffs alive and they leave the Chiefs discombobulated. That was a very disappointing result for them, especially considering the dominant start, but the plaudits, they have to go to the Knights. They managed to flip that game around and they did eventually get it across the line.